What's going on guys? Welcome back to Reverend. Today I'm going to be going over what parts I picked to build my 1.6 liter forged Mazda Miata. A couple things I want to state before I begin. Some of these parts are for stage one of my build. I'm going to be doing different power levels once I get supporting mods. So some of this stuff will be upgraded as I keep going. So my current horsepower goal for stage one of this build with my stock five speed transmission, VLSD differential, my current turbo, my injectors, clutch, and harmonic balancer is 250 wheel horsepower. That's roughly around where all my supporting mods kind of max out or begin to break. So I'm gonna say probably just shy of that number. My second power goal, once I get the six speed and the torsen differential is around 350 horsepower just whenever it maxes out on pump gas. I wanna run the maximum safe amount of power that I can on 93 octane. And then eventually that brings me to my third power goal, which is 500 plus. That's balls to the walls, E85, probably RX-7 Turbo 2 um, drivetrain, that or a BMW transmission, um, that will be able to handle it and give me a lot of power. I'm definitely gonna have to run boost by gear because uh, I'm there's no way I'm gonna be able to hook even on slicks. It, that's just gonna be crazy. Now the question I'm probably gonna be asked the most is why a 1.6 liter when the 1.8 is objectively a better engine? So the reason why I chose a 1.6 liter is because, is that a lawnmower? Who the fuck is mowing their lawn at 11 p.m. in the rain? Right, anyway, now the reason why I chose a 1.6 liter over a 1.8 is mainly one reason, and that's cost. The price to buy and then go and build a 1.8 liter is just more than I want to spend. When I have two running, well, were running 1.6 liter engines, one's a short nose crank with 90,000 miles, and then the other is a long nose, uh, my blown up one with 130,000 miles. So I figured I'd take the best parts out of both of them, put them together, and then replace some of the parts with forged stuff. And I could build that fully forged engine for a fraction of the price it would to even buy a stock 1.8 liter. Also for the 1.6s, I just like where the high pressure oil feed line is, um, like right on the block, and it's on the exhaust side, so it, you can just have it up to your turbo. Uh, 1.8s don't have that. You gotta figure out like your own oil system, and I don't like that. Here, let me show you. Ugh. So right there is where the oil line comes up. This is the exhaust side, so it just goes bink and then up to your turbo. Also, I build turbo kits for 1.6 liter Miatas, so I kinda wanna stick with the platform. All right, so what you've been waiting for? What did I pick for parts? Well, first off, what I already showed you. <sighs> My block. Oh, I forgot this chair doesn't have all the legs, and it just. Okay, so this is my block from the 91 short nose crank. They're exactly the same between the short and the long nose. The only difference is the little nose of the crank that sticks out. This is bored to 78.5 millimeters. A local machine shop did all the work to it. Um, they bored it, honed it, hot made it uh, in like a day or two. I'll link them down below. Uh, they're Stapleton's engines in Elmira, New York. And I took it to my tech school. I sandblasted it all and then painted it black with some high heat paint. Well, first I also primed it with a uh, high heat primer and then I put the black paint on. And on to the next thing. All right, sticking with the big parts, this is my head. This is actually a stock head I'm gonna be using. I've seen these hold over 500 horsepower. Um, shout out Mr. Matman. Uh, he has the most wicked 1.6 liter. But anyway, I'm probably in the future gonna be upgrading the valve springs to, I believe, Volvo valve springs. I think that's what he runs. But yeah, so stock head, that'll be fine. Um, I'm just gonna put that back on the car. Also, quickly, while we're on the train of things that are kept stock, it is the crankshaft. This is out of the blown engine. Um, I actually snapped a rod and it was stuck rotating on, I believe, this uh, journal, but I was able to get it off and there's no damage to it, so we're good. And now to the meat and potatoes, the pistons and rods. For pistons, I chose a set of 78.5 millimeter SuperTech. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about this brand. I like them, they're super light. Um, so yeah, most people either run these or the Wiseco ones. Um, these are a lot cheaper and it's a budget build, so I went with these. Then with pistons, you have to have rods. So I chose Max Peating Rod Rods. Um, I've seen a lot of hate for this brand, but honestly, I run their turbos and they're excellent. They've lasted me a long time. So I figured their rods are very similar to the Manly HBM rods. They're like built the exact same. So I figured I'd run them, they're a fraction of the cost, and they're rated for up to 800 horsepower. So for piston rings, I have the Wiseco 7850XX rings. I've seen people say that the best combination is the SuperTech pistons and these Wiseco rings. Uh, so I'm gonna trust them and run it. For spark plugs, I got some NGK V-Power BKR7Es. These are super good for boost. 
So for my main and my rod bearings, I chose ACL's Race Series. I've heard these are the best of the best, so I'm happy with these. Also from ACL, I've got some thrust washers. Then to hold everything together, I've got some ARP studs. There's head studs and main studs. These are just a must if you have high power. You don't want your head lifting or your, uh, your main caps coming off. So chose these. Uh, they're just good insurance for power. I've got a full DNJ gasket kit. This actually wasn't very expensive for every single gasket you need, so good deal. I've got a Felpro head gasket. I probably should have gone Cometic, but I mean, head gasket jobs aren't that difficult to do. If this blows, I'll just replace it with one. Also from DNJ, I've got their water pump, timing belt, and idlers. Uh, this came as a kit for pretty cheap, and it was one day shipping, so nice. And I've got this little guy, which is a Woodruff key. Uh, you always want to replace this when you're building your engine. It's just a little piece of metal. Um, Flying Miata sells these. It's genuine Mazda. And now for the stage one specific mods. These are RX-8 yellow injectors. I believe they're like 420 cc's. I've got a pretty cheap clutch. I believe it was like 80 bucks, somewhere on there. I don't know, I'll, I'll leave the name of it. Uh, it's rated up to 270 horsepower, so uh, pretty much exactly what I need for stage one of this build. Uh, I've been running this clutch for quite a while now. No slippage at, I think, 204 horsepower I was at. So, yeah, well, I actually bought two of these, so I might put the new one on and just save this one. And then finally, last but not least, the TD-04 turbocharger. This is also from Max Peating Rods, same brand as my rods. This is a TD-04 uh, 13T, uh, it's off of the Subarus. My buddy Nevin built a custom manifold and downpipe for this. I love this turbo, it's quick spooling. I've ran it for about a year now. I actually had another one, this is a brand new one, but I'm going to be running this for around 200 to 250 horsepower at for stage one. And then I plan on upgrading to a TDO 520G. Um, that's the bigger version of this. Same flange, so it'll fit right up. Uh, that'll get me to around like 350 to 400 horsepower. And then I'm gonna run something else, maybe like a Garrett to get to around 500. 500 horsepower. So yeah, those are the parts I picked. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you stick around for me building the engine. Please subscribe, like, comment, do all that, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.